Hey everybody, I am here with my mom and sister for another episode of House of Hope. Yeah. We're in Houston, Texas, and today we're going to talk about finances and help for your finances. You know, y'all, many people are struggling today. Many people have lost their jobs and just struggling financially. And we don't have all the answers, but we have some answers, and we want to bring help from the Word of God and just maybe um, you share with you some things that you have or heard, haven't heard before, and maybe we can start putting things into practice. So what would you guys say to these people who are struggling? Well, first of all, I'll just <laughs> say we're going to pray for you. Yes. And we're going to believe God for a turnaround in your finances. Yes. And so I just hope you get that thought and that hope and that vision in your heart that no matter where you are financially mm -hmm. right now, that things can change. And, you know, I just thought about uh, Daddy. Our own dad came from poverty. Yeah, and, did. you know, that's all he knew all his life. And then when he got... Uh, born again and uh, filled with the Spirit, he began to see that God wants to bless yes. us. And so, you know, it was a mind shift for him. Mm -hmm. He had to change the way he was thinking, yeah. and he had sort of been ingrained with that's the way it's supposed to be, but he changed to see God as a blessing God. Mm -hmm. And it, the Bible says he surrounds us with favors, with a yeah, shield. And so yes. he just decided that he would believe God's Word over what other people have told him mm -hmm. and really he began to give to the Lord like never before and and uh, to confess and declare the word of God concerning your finances yeah. there's so many good scriptures about your finances yeah. uh, in Proverbs there's a lot you mm -hmm. know God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus and so my dad and mom little by little you know, saw themselves come out of that poverty yeah. and into a place where they were blessed. And they taught us to tithe our income or give 10% to the Lord. And they showed us what it means to to be generous mm -hmm. and to help yeah. other people right. and still be blessed. You mm -hmm. know, the Bible says that the, the world of the generous gets bigger and bigger. Right. And we're witnesses of that, April, Amen. don't you think? Oh, That's yeah. Right. And one thing I know is you can't have an abundance a life, an abundant life, if you have a poverty mentality. That's right. And, and you know, like, Daddy had grew up in poverty, like Lisa said. Had he carried that lack mentality, that poverty mentality, we would all still be in poverty. So right. I think the mindset shift is, a, is something that's very important. You can't talk lack and expect to have abundance. <laughs> you can't, you know, just continually have that, oh, I'm never going to make it kind of attitude. You've got to put God's word to work, which, like Lisa said, is tithing the first 10% of your income. And the, the scripture says, try me now in this. And, you know, yes. see if God won't prove himself to you. And I've seen and heard so many stories of people yeah. who decided to put God to the test on that and decided to start giving uh, their first 10%. And, you know, somehow, some way, they can't even explain it. God just brings in the money. Amen. Instead of living paycheck to paycheck, they're living in that abundance. But yes. I, it, it does start with a mentality, that mindset shift, and, and knowing that God's Word is true. Hey, right, Mama? Right, right. I, I just thought of something while we were talking about uh, some people here in Houston that have one of the fanciest restaurants, not fancy, but best restaurants, mm -hmm. And, and anywhere, and we love to eat there, and they are so precious, and they are such givers. But about 40 or 45 years ago, I was driving home from the airport. It seems like i just flown in from someplace, and I got this call, and it was for our church, the old church, and when Daddy was here. And she said, who is this? And I said, well, this is Dodie Osteen. She said, the pastor's wife? And I said, yes. And she said, I can't believe this. But anyway, we talked and talked. And she just said she'd seen us on television, and she wanted to, to just say hello. And so she said, I want to send you a donation to the church. She didn't even come to our church. She's a different denomination. And she sent me, sent us $100,000. Oh, I mean, this was 40 years ago. That was like it was, what, a million dollars. Yeah. And she sent that to me. And do you know she is still our friend? Their restaurant has just gone. It's almost un the, uh, unbelievable how many people they have there. Oh, yeah. And that it's just uh, just wonderful. Now she helps people all over the world. Mm -hmm. She go, goes, she gives, she gives to people. And all because she did, well, that was one thing mm -hmm. she did. She gave to a lot of other people. But that was a precious story. Mm -hmm. You cannot outgive God. And Daddy used to say, the greater you're giving, the greater you're living. That's and that's so, it's so true. You can't outgive God. And I think about Granddaddy, your dad, 
he had this little book of every time he gave something to the church way back from the 1950s and we just watched how he gave a dollar you know way back then mm -hmm. and it increased up until the day you know right around the time he died he yes. kept giving to the church yeah. and he was blessed for he that yeah. and not only did he give to ours but his church in Baytown you know mm -hmm. where I grew up they mm -hmm. went to the Baptist church mm -hmm. he gave there and he gave to Lakewood Church yeah. I've got a, this little log in there it's so touching it's yellow but it says like a hundred dollars here, hundred. Uh -huh. Oh my! You don't know how that touches me. Oh, and yeah. he came out of poverty yeah. too. Yeah, he did. he did. Because he grew up in poverty mm -hmm. uh, as His an orphan. Died. Actually, mm -hmm. was raised by uh, a relative. But the thing is, uh, Granny and Grandma were so blessed. And he worked at the uh, Humble Oil Refinery, mm -hmm. which is now Exxon. Yeah. He didn't have this big, high-paying job. But you know what he did is he. Uh, he invested a little here and there into the Exxon yeah. stock, <laughs> and then it just boomed, and it mm -hmm. blessed them so much that they were able to leave my uh, mother inheritance and to bless yeah. us with college money. Yes. Yeah, That's and so amazing. he turned his whole his whole uh, financial situation around by honoring God with your money. That's yes. what it comes down yeah. to. And he was good to give to people. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the best man. So sweet. And I remember one time they took me, y'all probably never had this happen to you, but I was an only child. And they took me to a little store over in Pasadena, brought me 10 dresses. Man. Can you imagine <laughs> a little girl getting 10 dresses? I think I was about 10 years old. 10 dresses at one time because her mother and daddy just loved her so yeah. much. And then they probably cost $5. Yeah, dresses. really. <laughs> Let's break it down for people who are watching. You, you may think, well, that's all great and good, but I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Where do I, I have nothing. I'm barely making it paycheck to paycheck living. And I have kids, single parents out there. Lisa, what would you say, what's a good way, a simple way to just start? Uh, just start with what you have. That's right. And, and get a plan. Just decide, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put aside 10% for the Lord, and this is what I'm going to do with the rest of the money. I'm going to budget it. I'm going to live uh, within my means. Uh, I'm not going to buy everything I want. You know, we, we think that we need everything, mm -hmm. but, you know, sometimes we just have to buckle down and go to the place where, you know, I'm going to have to do without new clothes for a lot while. I'll just have to do uh, without certain things in order to get to a place you know, where you're you're not putting things on the credit card. Oh, yeah. Pay cash as much as you can, except for your house and maybe your car. Pay cash for what you have. And and maybe you're not even there. Maybe you don't have uh, money right now for food. Uh, you know what? We're going to pray that God supernaturally moves in yes, your life. In Jesus but you name. can start what, someplace by just learning to live within your means and taking those scriptures yeah. from the Bible and making them your own. Father, you said that you, you said would, uh, you would uh, cause us to prosper and, and be successful. You said mm -hmm. that you would supply you all my needs in Christ Jesus. I have needs right now. I'm bringing them to you. And I thank you that when I ask, you will, you will provide. And I think just getting that mindset of praying the Word yeah. of God, exercising your faith, like Amen. start putting your faith one time. I, when we've got a new home, God bless us with this home, and we didn't have enough furniture for it. Yeah. And so we needed dining room furniture. And my mom, she she always, uh, she would say to me, when are you going to get dining room furniture? And I said, well, when we can afford it, because we weren't going to get in debt. And she said, let me buy it for you, and then you can pay me back. And I said, no, I'm believing God for dining room furniture. And so uh, I just began to pray. Every time I walked through our dining room, I said, Father, I thank you that you fill our house with treasures. You bless us abundantly. Mm -hmm. You're going to You're gonna provide this furniture for us. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a knock on the door right before Christmas, and this neighbor of ours that goes to our church uh, said, Lisa, you always loved our dining room table. And I did. It was beautiful, <laughs> mahogany, uh, Chippendale chairs and everything. And she said, you know... Uh, we are going to go more contemporary, and we wondered if you want our dining room table <laughs> oh, and eight chairs. Is that amazing? And so yeah. they you still have it, don't you? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. gorgeous. They came in, they set it up for us, yeah. and then somebody else blessed us with the side table. Mm -hmm. But God really did fill our home with riches and treasure. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it just took faith 
on my part to get into the Word of God to find yeah. out what the Word says and then believe it. Yeah. So anyway. That's oh, good. That's- we have financial declarations, a video I'll link right here, and it's scriptures just like Lisa is talking about. Done all the work for you. You can play those and begin to declare those over your life. I want to go back to something that Lisa said at the first. She said to create a budget and then put the first 10% towards God. So I'm going to be one of them and say this, do I give my first 10% to God or can I wait and pay my bills and see if I have enough left over to give to God? Well, uh, that's what well, the Bible says. It's the first fruits. Mm-hmm. And so I believe that whatever you give first to God, God honors. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I, I've always seen him do this, that if I give him the 10% first, then he causes the 90% yeah. to go longer and right. farther mm-hmm. than we could ever you know, think or ask or imagine, as the mm-hmm. Bible says. It doesn't so, seem logical, but no. it works. And that's the only place that God says, try me now in this. Yeah. And so we just encourage you to try. It doesn't make sense naturally, but you know, if God said it, he'll do it. So yeah. we encourage you to try it out. Yeah. And two, he says God bless, will bless our bread and water and take sickness from the midst of us. So if we don't have sickness, we don't have to pay bills for doctors. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. And that's so good. God just blesses us and gives us food and everything. Mm-hmm. I know one thing that Daddy used to say always is not the amount of money you make, it's the management. Yeah. That's and um, he used to, I remember him telling me how to balance a checkbook back when we has, used to have to do that. And I didn't like it because I don't like to subtract. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble many times over money because I wasn't keeping my checkbook balanced, but it taught me so much to to take charge of my money. Take charge of your money so your money doesn't take charge of you. You know, you mm, don't... That's good. Um, yeah, that's what does Dave Ramsey said? Um, live like no one else so that you can live like no one else. That's so good. That's you good. manage your money. Don't let your money try to put you in a hole. Um, you know, you can make it through whatever you're going through right now. You single parents out there that are struggling. Um, Mama, why don't you just take time right now and pray for those single parents that might be struggling. Yeah, that touches me for people to have money. When you go to the store, a little child say, Mommy, can I have that? And you say, No, we can't give it. That touches me. Father, I want you to help those people that are not able to buy things for their children. Jesus, I pray that you will somehow show them the way, Father, that they will do it right so they'll be able to also provide for their children. You bless them so much, Father, as they tithe, that they will have extra money that they can spend thing on their ch- things on their children. Now do it, Father. Do that, Jesus, because the little children want things from their mother and daddy. So do it, Jesus, because you love them and because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think about a friend of mine that um, we were together. She's a big, she's a giver. She just gives and gives and loves to give. She doesn't have to have recognition or anything like that. We were at an event, and she gave $1,000, and that's a lot of money. And we came home. She was staying with me, and she got a phone call, and she, she got off the phone. She said, you're not going to believe this. Someone just donated to the ministry that she's involved in $100,000. Oh, wow. my word. I that's mean, it amazing. wasn't two hours before that happened. And then, talk about exceedingly abundantly, the lady called her back, and she said, no, I'm not going to make it $100,000, i am going to make it $200,000. Oh, my <laughs> word. That's amazing. So, I mean, it, it, God's word works, and it works Hallelujah. for her. She, she is an active giver, and it doesn't just happen for some. It can happen for every yeah. yeah. You know, God gives us the power to be successful. He gives us power to be wealthy, mm-hmm. um, not so we can flaunt it, but so that we can help others. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, one of the most touching things to me is for people not to have money to live, mm-hmm. not to have money for an apartment, and see mm-hmm. people on the streets, the homeless people and all. Mm-hmm. I just want to help them all. And we can, as God blesses us, or even before, uh, you know, we see all the the debt gone, you know, as the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we should give and be mm-hmm. generous, That's give of right. our time, anything we can, you know, because we should be helping the needy. Mm-hmm. The Bible yes. says that, that God blesses those who help the needy. Yeah. Yes. And um, I thought about something else, though. Uh, writing in the practical sense, writing down goals. Mm-hmm. You know, just decide what financial goals do you have. Do you need to pay off this credit card first? Uh, do you need to pay off this debt second? Just have a list. And, That's good. And don't just be vague about it, mm-hmm. but just start working. Okay, I'm going to pay off this debt first. I'm going to pay off that debt second. And listen, it will, it will, you'll get there. 
You'll see it as you just do it little by little. It may not happen overnight, but a little by little you can chip away yeah, that's good. at those debts and mm-hmm. see you know yourself come into a, a more blessed and abundant financial place. Yeah, that's good. I think that's so important because where your focus goes, your energy flows. So that's if you're right, actively good. pursuing these things, there's no greater joy than to check something off the list that's right. and say, man, I did this, I did that. Mm, and true. you can you can do it. I thought about just now as we were sitting here, the time that Daddy and you built the church, I don't remember the time, I think it was in the 80s, and he decided to build the 8,000-seat auditorium. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he the time was thriving in Houston, good economy and everything, and he thought this is the time to build the church, and he got up and announced it to the congregation. Everybody was excited and happy because we had grown out of that 5,000-seat auditorium. Long story short, he just, he said this, you know, he missed God, it wasn't the right time. Well, Houston fell into one of the worst depressions. Is that what it's called? Depression? Uh, recession. Recession. <laughs> yeah, you Depression, were. recession. We yeah. don't. <laughs> and the, God spoke to my dad mm-hmm. and said, now it's time to build the church. And the first thing that he said was, get behind me, Satan. Because <laughs> he thought there's no way the economy is so bad. People are out of work. And God just basically said, tell the people and watch me do my thing. And that's exactly what happened. And how long was it that y'all built it was, the In a year, uh, they we raised the money for it, which mm-hmm. was over a million dollars, I think, back then. And uh, God also said to my dad, you know, people will know it was me and, and, not, yeah. them, and yes. not, not you. And built the church within however many, how long? A yeah, year? A year, year and a so, half? Yeah. Totally debt-free in exactly. the midst of the worst recession of Houston. Yeah. So, you know, God's not bound by what's going on in the That's world. Exactly He's not got, right. bound by the economy. That's you know, right. people may be losing their jobs, but we declare favor over our lives and yeah. over your lives in Jesus' name. And, yes. and it goes back to standing on the Word of God, like Lisa mm-hmm. said. You know, He surrounds you with favor as a shield. The canopy of favor is over yeah. your life. And, and declaring that every single day. All the time. And you remember the time when he was going to do that? And God said, don't do it, but give the money to the little pastor down the street that yeah. his church is closing mm-hmm. up. Is that when the church was small? Well, it was when they were thinking about building. But, oh, okay. But, yes, and it we was had small. a certain, yeah, certain amount of money, but, and it, we could have put on the new one. But he, God just spoke, told him spoke, uh, to give that money to this little pastor down the street. And I thought, Jesus, I mean, we're saving it up for a church. He want us to give it away. And he took it down there and talked to the man. And the man didn't know he was going to give it to him. And he gave it to him, the money right there. And that man wept. And I'm telling you, it, and his church just flourished after that. And after Daddy went to heaven, this man went to heaven. And I went to his funeral. And that's one of the things that they said was Pastor John Osteen helped keep this church alive mm-hmm. years ago. I'm telling you, that thrilled me so mm-hmm. much. So y'all gave out of a need to someone else, and mm-hmm. God ended up blessing y'all yeah, as well. Yeah, we like with that $100,000 to the yeah, church. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I remember another time that... Uh, when, when we were in that feed store, remember, that mm-hmm. sat about 234 people, and Daddy would have us look outside the wall and yeah. see by faith the yeah. new building. He wanted to uh, build that, and we all did. And, uh, you know, we didn't have all the money, but God spoke to my dad. He said, start somewhere. Mm-hmm. Build the foundation. Yeah, oh, oh, that's and good. And so yeah. that's, yeah, that's talking about just little by little. And so he thought, okay, we have enough money for the foundation. So he built the foundation. Well, the, it got the people more excited, and then they built it all out mm-hmm. within a short amount of time. And so you got to start somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. You know, every time you take a step of faith, uh, yeah. you know, you're just taking ground from the enemy. You're taking authority over that spirit of poverty, and you're changing things for your uh, legacy to come. That's, That's good. Somewhere. Man, that is such a great story. I had forgotten about that. And the the... the Real deal here is we just want to offer you hope that no matter what you're going through right now, no matter what you're right facing, now. God is there. God is here. God is with you. He sees what you're going through. And we want to join our faith with you and believe that according to the scripture, the tide of the battle is turning, that God's going to work things out in your favor for your good. You're going to get that job. You're going to yes. get a high paying job with great benefits. Your children are going, to, yes. are going to be taken care of. Amen. And we're just going to stand in agreement. Lisa, Amen. would you pray? Yes, thank I will. Father, Father so we just called. thank Amen. you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you desire to bless us. That, Father, you said that we're blessed like Abraham, Jesus. Father, our, our father of faith. And, Father, Thank what you, you did for him, you will do for us. Amen. And, Father, we believe that, and we take hold of your word, yes, and we, we thank you Jesus. that you said you'd meet every need. 
And yes. Father, I pray that every need would be met Amen. in abundance, Father, in, abundance. in overflow and increase, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you that today your people are getting a new vision, Father. Their, yes. their faith is being stirred to believe you, to do the impossible, to Amen. believe you, to get, help them get out of debt, to believe you, to see their children go to college, yes. Father, Hallelujah. to just see their dreams come to pass financially and in every area. Father, I pray for those who need a supernatural move in their finances, yes, that you would move on their behalf. Father, Amen. that you would do what they cannot do, even do, now, Father. even do this Jesus. week. I thank you that you're going to move in their behalf, Amen. and they're going to see that you provide for your people. They are your Jesus children, Amen. and you are our wonderful Heavenly Father, you and are. you provide for them. Hallelujah. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would give them to the courage yes. to begin to honor you with their money, to begin to set a budget, yes. and, Father, to see you move in their so lives. In Jesus' name, we pronounce them. blessings upon yeah, them. Blessings, we Father. thank you that you give them favor. You're surrounding them yes, with your Jesus. favor as with a shield. Amen. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name. amen. Amen. Yay, that was a good one, y'all. Yes. Thanks for being with me and with us today. And Know this, we love you, and until this yes. time next month, remember there's always hope. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Bye-bye.